Hey everyone, what's going on? Retire on Dividends here. I'm making my first video on my laptop that I finally purchased because, again, the channel's kind of growing a little. Got interviews going on and this and that. So, um, I, you know, I made it as far as I could on my phone. And I'm still going to do most of my videos on my phone, but there are going to be occasions where I'll do, you know, I'll use the laptop because. You know, it's simply better for navigating. Certainly when I go live, I'll use the laptop. But but anyway, let's get to it. This video is about Spy T. Spy T is a new fund from Defiance. Um, again, Defiance has the QQQY, the you know, JEPI, IWMY, but now they're coming out with another new fund. So let's go check it out. So if you go under ETFs, you see it right on the bottom, Spy T, S P five hundred, uh, income target ETF. So let's click that. And obviously, here's the information on it. Nothing, you know, it just came out. So there's not going to be much detail, you know, um, as far as the actual, you know, number data. But here's right, right off the bat, they aim to achieve a target annual income of 20% in the S&P 500 using options paid out monthly. So again, another monthly payer, another high dividend. 20% um, though is considered low, you know, compared to the other defiance ones. So this one, obviously it's going to have, it's not going to be, I'll say as risky, um, but obviously with less risk is less reward. So you get 20%, but let's see what they do. Let's see how they even earn it. Um, so let's see on the bottom, let me highlight here. I don't even know if I can, yeah, I can. So selling of daily credit call spreads on the index. So that right off the bat, you know, they do they do options premium, but they're not going to just they're not going to sell puts like the other funds. They're going to sell calls and they're going to buy calls. So they're going to do what's called, uh, you know, a call spread. And we'll get into that. Well, well, we can look at the holdings to show you what, what they're doing. Enhanced potential yield. OK. Um, oh, this actually explains right here. It, our option strategy involves selling a call option while simultaneously buying another call option at a higher strike, maximizing income potential. Uh, by focusing on short-term options, we aim to offer enhanced yield compared to traditional uh, option strategies. So basically, they're going to sell a call, uh, typically you know a little out of the money, um, and then they're going to buy a call further, further up above the strike. You know, so they can take advantage of, you know, if that. If that strike gets blown away, for example, and you know, and it goes above the strike of the buy call, they, they can take advantage of that profit. Um, let's see, each day. So that yeah, they're gonna do daily calls, daily credit spreads, I should say. Net assets currently total 2.49 million. Again, this is brand new fund. The fund price, the last closing price was $19.96. Shares outstanding, 125000 Fund inception four days ago, um, as we speak, this is March 11th. I'm probably going to release this video though on March 12th. So as of the release of the video, it'll be five, this fund will be five days old. Uh, they hold, you know, they have five holdings, which we'll get into. Again, the ticker symbol is SPYT, primary exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. All right, so here's the top holdings. So I don't even have to uh, export it because, uh, you know, the hand in the screen. So I'll highlight over each one. I guess this is a cool part about doing a presentation on a laptop. Um, so the first holding is actual physical shares that they own. So they own the SPY, which again is the S&P 500 ETF. So, so they own the SPY. They actually own 4,765 shares, which makes a market value of 2.4 million. They also own that money market fund, um, you know, government money market fund, FGXXX. $55,000 in that one. Um, I'll get into that call in a second. And obviously there's cash, negative cash, but whatever, I'm sure they'll fix that. So when you see, um, when all right, so when you see a call and the market value is positive, that's gonna be the buy call, okay? Because keep in mind, when you buy a call, you know, that that call, you're gonna, you can make money on that call, right? You can't lose money. When you buy a call, whatever you spend for that premium, you can't lose and any more money than what you what you spent, right? It's either worthless or it's worth money. So as of right now, 
it's a positive amount, so it's worth money. This by call, it's worth 4550 okay? So they bought a call, expiration date of March 11th, which is today. Obviously, this video is going to come out tomorrow, though. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's just for, you don't care about the actual day, so that's irrelevant. It's just going to be daily calls. But again, they bought a call for five. 514 oh no it looks like 5140 because it's spx okay the spx what is the x s uh, oh my god spx price so let's go to this spx market i always use market watch Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's in the 5,000s. No, I do not. All right, so SP, S, SPX is 5,101. So they bought a call for 5,140, okay? So if SPX goes above 5,140, they're going to make money on this call. All right, what else did they do? Down here on the last one, this is where, again, if you see a negative, that means it's a sold call. Because as soon as you sell a call, you collect the premium. However, it's going to cost money to close it. So since it costs them money, the market value will be negative, bringing down, obviously, the net asset value. So they sold a call right here, March 11th, strike price. It's actually easier to read it here because, you know, they always have zeros to fill in uh, the symbol. But here, it's the actual number, okay? So the strike price of the sold call is 5,130. What do we say SPX was? 5,102. So guess what? They're gonna make they're they're gonna collect a premium if SPX does not go above 5,130, then this call will expire worthless. Okay. So the buyer on the other end who paid the premium, you know, they're, they're not gonna make money, right? So um yeah so we, that's a win that's a win for this transaction because when you sell calls it's a bearish play however up here when you buy calls that's a bullish play uh you know so the way it's looking if the spx closes where it's at which is 5104 um the premium we collect on this is a win so this contract will expire worthless well it looks like there's five contracts and then the five contracts up here will not make any money because you know, the buy call is now worthless because it did not go above the 5,140, okay? So again, in today's scenario, we're going to make money on the premium. And that's good because, um, you know, as far as I know, and I believe it's written in the prospectus, which we'll cover in a second, the premium that they make on the sold call is greater than the premium that they pay on the buy call. So net, net altogether, uh, they're still making money. So in this example, this equation, they're not making money. Now, I'm sorry, in this equation, they are making money. Obviously, they're making the net of the two. Now, what, how can they lose money? Well, they can lose money if the sold call strike gets blown through and the, the price of the underlying stays below the buy call. So in this example, it's 5130 for the covered call. So it needs to be above that and below this. So somewhere in between. So if, it, if we close at 5,135, this, we have to pay the gap, right? Looks like whatever, $5 per share times whatever. And then this would be worthless. But if it goes, if it blows through this number, we can make money on the buy call. However, if it, if it stays in between, you know, this credit spread, if it goes in between the credit spread, I don't do credit spreads, by the way. So I hope, hopefully, um, I am explaining this right for any options gurus that are watching, but I believe I am. It's, it makes sense, right? And I know how options work, so this makes sense to me. Um, so yeah, obviously, if it goes in between the two, uh, I'm sure there's a break even point on both sides. So it, if you know um, the break even would be like you know this plus the premium that they're making net of the premium that he, that they paid on that, of course. So so yeah, the idea is. If these get blown out of the water, like the daily calls, if they get blown out of the water, no need to worry. We have the buy call to support it. But like a, a, an example like today, if the stock goes down, if the SPX goes down, then guess what? We win, right? We win uh, and we make money.
However, more than likely, the SPY is going down, which is a smaller version of the SPX, um, because, you know, they both mimic the S&P 500. So obviously the underlying going down will bring down the price of uh, the actual uh, stock. So if you look at uh, SPY T, right, they should be in the red as well. If we go here and we search for SPY T. Yeah, so they're down as well. They're down 0.41%, which obviously, you know, it's not going to mimic what the other is down because they made premium, right? They they should actually be beating the other one, right? They're down 0.41%. If I go see if this works. Click off. Yeah, they're down point. Oh, no, this is beating it. Oh, now they're down. All right, it's pretty damn close. Either way. I'm having too much fun with this uh, MacBook now. All right, so that's pretty much it. The distribution schedule, though, it will be in line with the other Defiance funds, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, obviously, it's going to make it easy on the company to have this, you know, everything lined up. Um, but yeah, so anyway, obviously, if you click on the prospectus, which I have saved, um, you know, it's up on the screen. Here it is. That is what matters, right? They have to abide by the prospectus. So let's get to it. So right now, if you look at the top of the prospectus, they have three funds. So Spy T is not alone. Spy T has two friends. So as expected, his two friends are QQQT, which obviously is the NASDAQ version, and IWMT, which is the Russell version. They are not out as of yet. So Spy T looks to be the first. This prospectus is dated March 6th, by the way, as you can see. But again, there's a lot of audio people. Got to keep that in mind. All right, scrolling through, um, just so you guys know, real quick, um, I'm doing my highlights based on the NASDAQ 100, um, but it doesn't matter. All three of these funds should have similar wording. I did not double check that, but for the most part, every time I've gone through these, you know, and they have like three funds, the wording exactly the same. The one thing I did notice that is different is the operation, the total annual fund operating expenses. So for whatever reason, QQQT and IWMT are over 1%, 1.05%. SPY T is not. SPY T is, you know, 0.9. I'll show you this. Actually, let me, let me just scroll. I'll show you now. SPY T is like 0.9 something percent. So SPY T, for whatever reason, is cheaper than um, the other two. Again, here, see? SPY T is 0.94%. So... What sense does that make? I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense, honestly, but whatever. All right, so let's move on. All right, so the fund's investment approach is designed to generate income through options premium to derived from selling index call spreads. Again, a spread is buy call, sell call. So they seek a target annual income level of 20%. They sell at the money or near the money call spreads. Um, so... Take that for what it's worth, you know. Uh, it's going to be tight. They're going to be tight. Um, the sold call spread generate premium and also allow the fund to benefit if the index value increases above the call spreads cap described below. Okay. It's kind of like what we explained before when we're looking at the holdings. Um, just informational here too. Will not seek to take def uh, temporary defensive positions, which, you know, a lot of people do have that question. So it's fair that they... They do show that there. <clears throat> Got to take a sip of water. All right. Each day, the fund will sell index call spreads to generate net income. So again, it's it's this is a daily transaction. This is a very active fund. So for very active funds, there's very high fees. So that's why they're charging 0.94% and 1.0 whatever percent on the other. This involves selling call options at a strike price at or near the money and buying a call option above that strike price, okay? So in the example of where are they selling this covered call, at what price, it says at or near the money. And as far as the buy call, it just says above, the, you know, the strike of the sell call. It doesn't say how much, how much higher, but it just says above. So to me, it's probably going to be, you know, select, you know, a little, a little above. I know that's not proper terminology, but let's move on. The fund aims for consistent monthly distributions, primarily relying on the income generated from selling the call spreads. Okay. 
If the anticipated daily income from these activities surpass a threshold, Zega Financial, you, you know Zega, who is the sub-advisor, they may adjust the strategy to seek to meet a daily income target that will enable to fund the fund to uh, in turn achieve the annual target. Although there is no guarantee that the fund will be able to achieve its annual target. Okay. So it just says like they may adjust strategy if they need to. Um, it also says that there's no guarantee of the annual target. That's why it's called a target. So that's understood. All right. So the fund will not participate directly in approximately the first 0 to 0.5% of any daily gains of the index. Um, oh, yeah. Because because uh, the premium they that they that they uh, well actually let's read that again the fund will not participate directly in approximately the first zero to 0.5 percent of any daily gains in the index so they own the underlying if it goes up 0.5 percent they do not participate well, instead the fund will seek. Generating income. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that sentence. The fund will not to participate directly in approximately the first zero to 0.5 percent of any daily gains in the index. Why not? They own the index, so why not? Because they're going to sell calls and they're going to buy a call, and that'll generate the income. Um, I don't know. Either way, I'm not going to look too far into that. But if anyone has a, an opinion on that, please leave in the comments down below. If the index value experience gains above that day's upper call strike level, the fund will participate in the index gains after that point. Yes, 100%. So, yeah, if it goes above the buy call, you know, from there, that point on, you know, they're going to make money. They're going to make money on that buy call. Um, so the fund's portfolio is comprised mainly of shares of the index ETS, which we saw they own SPY. So sold index call options contracts generally at or near the money, which we also saw in the holdings, bought index call options contracts with strike prices above the strike price of the sold options, which we saw, limited holdings of U.S. Treasury securities and cash, which we saw. Well, it's now like a money market index. All right. They got this cool table. I love when they put the tables because it's so much easier. So this is a great explanation, a great kind of visual. I know it's words, but it's still a better visual than just paragraphs. So the, they're going to have a sold call option contract. So they're going to sell a call. And then I highlighted at or near the money. Okay, we know that. Um, and then it's going to be typically one day, but may extend to one week. All right, so they, they added that. So look, so far, obviously, it's, you know, what we saw was one day. And then they'll have down below, bought call option contracts. This will be out of the money, okay? And this will be, this strike will be above the other strike of the sell call. Uh, and then it says, provide exposure to the full extent of any increases in value experienced by the index above the options strike price. Typically one day, but may extend to one week, okay? U.S. Treasuries, it says six month to two year maturity date. Uh, but again, it looks like they don't own treasuries. They just own the money market fund. But whatever, it's the same crap. Um, you're going to get around the same, you know, interest rates. Uh, this, what I'm scrolling past through now, this explains all of the different risks. Uh, I'm not saying this is not important information. It is, but it, I'm not going to completely bore you to death and cover why this is risky. Because why this is risky, there, there's tons and tons of reasons. So again, that's why I'll save this prospectus in my Discord for you guys to read this part if you want. Uh, the investment advisor for this fund is Title Investments LLC, and the sub advisor is Zega, which again we know for Zega, Jay Pestricelli from Yieldmax, you know he's in charge of Zega, so obviously he's involved with this fund, which is as expected. He's very involved with Defiance. Um, and then that's it. So if I scroll past, you know, this is now the S and P five hundred, which you know I'm gonna quickly scroll through this there's nothing nothing new as compared to what we saw on the nasdaq okay so i'm going to scroll past all of this and then obviously here's iwmty no i'm sorry iwmtt no iwmt oh my god i can't think 
I'm on my lunch break, guys. I can't wait to eat. I'm freaking starving. But I wanted to get this video out because it, it is a cool fund. I heard, you know, Kamar and his people talking about it the other day. It's a very good discussion. Um, so what else we got? Investment advisors, sub advisor, Jay Pestricelli, you know, just some information on him. So I don't even think I highlighted this far down, but you know, all of this, you know, it's, it's important to understand the prospectus and read what it has, because this is what they go by. This is what they abide by. This is, this is filed. Okay. So, um, Paying them out. Yeah, so their average daily, it looks like they're looking for 0.25%. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. All right, so nothing new, just some information. Okay, so that's it as far as the prospectus goes. But again, I'll save that on my Discord. Um, but yeah, for the most part, you saw the holdings. Let's see how if I click this on the Mac, how does it come out? Download holdings. Allow. This is. Oh God, what is happening? This is way too much work just to pull up a stupid spreadsheet. Um, all right, so this is another view of the holdings, just so you guys know. You know, we we covered the data a second ago. Oh, when I click, it actually highlights. That's pretty cool. All right, I don't know how to get this stupid thing on the right away, but I'll figure that out later. All right, so again, when you see a negative down here, that is the sell call. So they sold a call for five thousand one hundred and thirty. Okay. And they bought a call for 5140 Again, that's above the sell call strike price. So, uh, yeah, they're going to do this daily. And they're going to make money. They're going to make premium when they sell the call. And they're going to pay a premium when they buy the call. The, it's basically protection from getting blown out of the water so bad that they lose money. Because, again, if this was a standalone and the SPX went to, say, like 6000 it's not going to happen. All right, let's just say 5200 They're going to have to pay that gap. Cash settled on a daily basis. So, but guess what? Since they bought the call, if that happens, they're going to make money, right? So that's going to cover, you know, the gap in between. Um, so obviously, you know, we'll have to run the numbers. I should make like a spreadsheet myself because again, I, I, I want to see how much they made on this versus how much they paid on that to see, okay, how much it's going to cost them to, cash settle this versus how much it would how much they would make on that um i know that would be awesome information to see so it's something i'll think about for for the future um so i i will i will think about that but again this is my first video via laptop um so hopefully it came out good i'm gonna i'm gonna hit finish in a second but hopefully it came out good. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If if it worked out well, if it came out pretty good, please let me know in the comments. If I could change anything, also let me know. Because again, I'm new to this video. I'm new to recording on a laptop. Again, I do everything on the phone. So this is like a first for me. So, uh, so yeah, as always, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you were entertained. Uh, but yeah, always do your own research. Again, don't listen to idiots on YouTube. They're just here. You know, a lot of them are here to help. A lot of them are just here to make money. Um, but, you know, take take what you can. You know, grab some a little knowledge from this guy, a little knowledge from that guy, and then, you know, make yourself a superpower, right? Because you can, you can then, you know, take all the knowledge together and create what you need. Like, everyone is their own person. Everyone has their own journey. Everyone has their own risk tolerance. So, you know, learn however you can. But either way, if you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more content like this, a review of funds, let me know what funds I can review. Because it seems it's actually pretty easy to review the funds on the laptop. I could probably, I don't know, I could probably make it, you know, pretty easy. Just do one on a lunch break a week. I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyway, I got to go. I'm going to post this and then we'll go from there. Uh, but thank you for watching. Later.